Hey guys, what's up? DJ's Aviation, welcome to another video of mine. In this video, we'll be discussing a rather debated topic. Is the A350 or 787 better for airlines? Obviously, I'll be stating facts and figures throughout the video, so there'll be some graphs and tables to better explain what I'm saying. At the end of the video, I will compare the two with my own personal thoughts. Of course, you may not agree, but I hope you can understand and respect them. So both the A350 and 787 are two of the most popular long-range wide-body jetliners in the market today. The two were introduced with airlines just a few years ago, with the 787 being the older of the two. The 787 was introduced in 2011 with ANA, while the A350 in 2014 with Qatar. When it comes to purchasing an aircraft, there are a number of factors that need to be taken into account. This is not only how an aircraft can help benefit an airline, but also the efficiency of it, and in some cases, most importantly, the list prices. An aircraft's list price is crucial when it comes to purchasing an aircraft. As in daily life, you simply cannot afford some things. Airlines, believe it or not, have similar concerns. This is also why the A380 probably didn't obtain as many orders as Airbus would have hoped. Multiple carriers were simply concerned that the large sum of money just couldn't justify the aircraft, and there was a chance they wouldn't make that back from passengers and so on. The 787 is far cheaper than the A350, with each variant being around US 50 million cheaper. The numbers are certainly startling. Of course, just off the list price you could immediately say the Boeing 787 is the better choice. As everything in life, if you pay more for something it has to warrant your extra money. Obviously with this case the A350 is 13 centimeters wider, and while this really does not seem like a big difference, that little bit of added space does make the comfortability of the seat and in terms of personal space in the cabin a little bit better than the 787. The A350 also has one of the quietest cabins in the skies to date. This is thanks to the NADP, which optimizes the thrust and flight path to reduce noise. To give you an idea of the quietness of the A350 cabin, usually mid-flight the sound is about as loud as a regular conversation two people would have. Also, the A350 has the tallest ceiling of any commercial aircraft, plus larger supersized overhead bins, which showcase how the A350 is certainly heavily aimed at passengers and crew comfort. However, the A350 does not have the revolutionary window tinting that the 787 has. The A350 rather still has the large shutters. While this is a small detail, it all adds up when it comes to specific airline choices. Airlines are also going to choose an aircraft that is safe. I mean, what I'm saying will be thrown out the window when we see how many of each aircraft were ordered, but essentially the 787 has been struck with a number of problems, especially with their lithium-ion batteries. These batteries offer greater capacity for weight, and if required, more opportunities to power aircraft systems. In 2013, all 50 of the Boeing 787s in service were grounded for multiple months after fires broke out on an all-Nippon Airways and Japan Airlines 787. These two incidents weren't related, but both were caused by thermal runway events of the lithium-ion batteries. Boeing did go ahead to redesign these batteries, however in 2014 there was another battery fire incident on board a Japan Airlines 787 during some routine maintenance. This is not only an issue for Boeing, but at the time was a huge issue for passengers. I would certainly be concerned if I personally had to fly on a Boeing 787 during that period, and I would assume airlines were as well. This may have been a leading factor when it came to orders for the A350 during this particular time frame as well. Another key is the specifications of an airplane. The 787 and A350 are both really complicated aircraft, and they are made more complex with the number of tables that have been provided. I'll be adding two screenshots throughout this period to help you understand what I'm saying, but in a visual way. While I could cover all variants of the 787 and A350, I will just touch over them briefly. In the 787 family, there are three variants. The 787-8, which has the largest range but smallest capacity. The 787-9, which has the average range and average capacity size. And then the 787-10, which has the largest capacity but shortest range. This is similar for the A350 family, with the higher variant having the larger capacity but less range. I'm just going to stick to comparing the A350-900 and 787-9 with each other though. The Boeing 787-9 seats 290 passengers typically, with the A350 seating some 315 to 325. This is still very dependent on the configuration of the cabin, which can change with airlines' choices on how they place their layouts in the space provided to them. The range is also rather different on the two aircraft. 
The Boeing 7879 has a range of 14,140 kilometers, while the A350-900 is hovering around 15,000. So it's evident the more and more we examine the A350, it further proves its hefty price tag. One thing we haven't examined is the length of the two aircraft. While we touched on the width of the two, it's also important to take a look at the length as this can either add value or decrease it. The 787 comes in at a length of 206 feet or 62.81 meters, whereas the A350 is 66.8 meters in length. This is a drastic increase to be honest, and it is what makes the price tag not only more understandable but worth it. There are a few other specification details in the two tables which you can read if you want. I'll give you a second to pause the video if you wish to read. Our final area is the order situation. Both are relatively new aircraft but have gained a number of orders already. We'll begin with the 787. The Boeing 787 has gained 1,287 orders in total, with the 787-9 being the most popular with 703 of those. The Dash 8 variant has 413 and the yet to be delivered 787-10 has 171 showing the huge demand for long range and fuel efficient aircraft. The deliveries for the 787 have also been very steady with around 125 being delivered in 2017 alone. When it comes to the A350 it has not received as many orders as the 787, however one could argue that it's down to the aircraft being introduced at a later date. The A350 has a very modest 858 orders with 681 orders for the A350-900 and 169 for the A350-1000. I believe included in the 858 orders include 8 for the cancelled A350-800, so please just ignore that figure in the table. So far the A350-900 has been the only variant delivered with the A350-1000 awaiting delivery to Qatar as we speak. If we compare the orders, it's interesting to see the order process for the 787 began some two years before the A350. In those two years, the 787 gained nearly 300 orders, so it really brings up the question that if the A350 was launched at the same time as the 787, would some of the carriers that opted for the 787 switch to Airbus? Sadly, we will never know. Concluding this video, I just want to express my thoughts. I've never flown on an A350, but have experienced the 787 with Qantas. Overall, in my opinion, the A350 is better for airlines. I know after just making this claim, a lot of people will be disappointed, but as I mentioned, this is just my opinion. You are also entitled to have a completely different one. That's what makes these videos so interesting. My opinion has come from the safety records and other small touches. The 787 had a rough start, as we mentioned earlier, and certainly caused some concern when it came to flying. For me, this is a huge factor, even though we haven't thankfully had an issue since. Small touches include the new tinted window concept on board the 787. As I've experienced the Qantas 787 first hand, while this feature was cool for the first few minutes, it became very tedious as time went on. Not only did this feature not register me touching it, but it also became agitating to get the correct setting. While a lot of people will welcome the change, for me, I honestly prefer the very standard and old style blind that can be conveniently pulled down without one having to wait two minutes to get the device to register that you wanted to adjust the tin. Either way, both aircraft are very successful and good aircraft, but I would have to opt for the A350. However, some airlines would certainly disagree with this, and that's the beautiful thing about it. These aircraft have created competition between Airbus and Boeing. If you made it to the end of the video, I just want to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch it. I do truly appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching once again, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.